everybody, welcome to another On The Painting Table. I know, I know, it's been too long. Um, I've gone quite a while without doing it on the painting table. The last one was actually before I started the M31 stuff and we did our launch party for the new Horse Heresy Plastics. Um, since then, I've run and attended a charity and infinity tournament for ITS. Um, I've gotten a whole bunch of Horse Heresy stuff done and I've accumulated a whole bunch of new projects. I also completely filmed and wrapped with uh, Mike and Owen the Thought of Lich Lord campaign which I think we did a really great job on, I'm pretty proud of. Um, so I'm kind of catching you up on what got painted in that time. Um, I also went to the Dominican for a week, so I was off doing nothing for, for a little while as well. So this should actually catch up for almost, I'd say three weeks to a month of my painting um, that you guys may have seen pictures of on Facebook we haven't seen in person, and also some spoilers for some new projects and a little bit of unboxing stuff too. Um, so let's take a look at what's been on the painting table in the last three weeks. So here's the pile of stuff I painted in the last month. We're gonna go left to right. Um, first of all, I painted a whole bunch more critters for Frostgrave, some ghouls. Um, these are plastic manic ghouls on some epoxy sculpt bases. I think I painted them with like three or four colors and then some washes and that's really it. <laughs> I got a bear. Um, Mike gave him to me. I think he might be Reaper. I honestly don't know where he came from. It's just one of those miniatures that like Mike left on my desk and was like, we need bears, paint this. So I painted him as a little brown bear. Um, and then I've got some frost rates. These are for the Lich Lord. Um, they are actually old metal woes for Malifaux that I just painted up in some cool blue colors. So frost rates, ghouls, and a bear. Um, we have my 30K stuff that I did for Siege of Cal, or sorry, Betrayal of Calth. You probably saw most of it in videos already, but I figured it, I owed it like a close-up shot. So there's my Praetor um, with his power, like uh, sorry, his Paragon Blade and Plasma Pistol. Um, we've got a Headhunter Kill Team who have the Phobos pattern um, Forge World Bolters to give them like the fancy guns. And I did them up with all the bits to make them look like they're in Mark V, kind of like salvage beat up armor because they're in the field infiltrating. And I gave them um, power knives. So they're all power knifey on the back because the whole squad actually gets power knives, but they don't get one attack, or they only get one attack. They don't get two attacks um, like veteran squads do. They do, however, get Ballistic Skill 5. Um, I actually, after having played some games with them, realized that these guys, the veteran squad, are better. Because <laughs> they do basically everything the same. They don't get power knives, they just get Legion Gladiuses. So they have um, four attacks with counter charge, if I give them counter charge, um, if e anyone just touches them. But they can have Sniper on their guns, which is just better than Bane Strike Ammo. Because then you get, like, potentially AP2 missile launchers and stuff. And, and just everything becomes AP2 <laughs> because it's um, on a 6 to wound, it's Sniper. Um, and that's just better than AP3 on a six. Uh, and then we've got the Betrayal of Kalth um, Contemptor Dreads and my regular Forgeal Contemptor Dread, my second one. Uh, once again, all of these guys, just for the record, for everyone who's asked, they were base coated dried bark, they were airbrushed zenithly with Incubi Darkness and Old Hawk Turquoise, and then they were highlighted with, um, what is it, Warpstone Glow and Sybarite Green, just edge highlighted with that. Uh, and that is the basic color scheme for them. They're not traditional, like, well, not traditional, but this new school Alpha Legion color scheme where it's all like metallic and like tinted and like a baby powder blue. Um, I did mine in a, a weird cyan and green, and that's what I liked. Uh, and then we've got my national treasure, Double Squallow. This was for 80 Food Drop. Owen and I both made the mistake of just seeing that that tournament was going to be ITS, but not really digging too deep into the tournament pack, except for like looking at the cheats and stuff that you get by donating cans, um, which we just didn't end up using because we just figured we would just play a straight scenario or a straight like game of infinity. Um, and so I brought two lists, and one of them was this silly Neo Terror list that literally has two squallows in it. <laughs> so I painted two squallows because I had them and because having a, a game with two tags is just hilarious and fun. Um, and it had actually 10 orders. Like it had a Fusilier link. It had two Auxilia with uh, Oxbots. It had a Machinist with a pair of um, Palbots, Double Squallow. What else did it have? That's two, four, nine and ten that's it yeah that's it that's exactly what it had and then the csu i'm getting a second csu because in my other neotair list which I actually ended up playing all the games um at that tournament uh i need to because csus with breaker rifles for 12 points are amazing and you can have two of them in the neotair list um so what i'm using as the second one is the dire foes um, objective model which also is just like basically dressed exactly the same as the csu with a briefcase so it just looks like a csu with an undeployed briefcase gun and I think that's amazing. So um, I think Owens are ordering it because he wants both Constantinos and the Hacky Slam model that come in it. And I'm gonna steal the objective model in it using either CSU because I want to because they're amazing and I was proxying the O12 guys instead. So here's what I painted in the last little while. 
um, close-ups and stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed that look. And here's what's coming next. So big thanks to CB. Um, they actually sent me these guys uh, and I'm super excited to paint them. I've got the new Nice HMG who is just baller. Um, and if Nice Sniper Rifle is good, Nice HMG has got to be good, uh, especially in active terms. So Nice Sniper is like a classic uh, Pan-O, um, like how you say ARO model. It's, well, it's a classic ARO model in Infinity. It's a guy with a sniper rifle or a multi-sniper rifle that is um, equipped with an MSV2. So it's like a bow. Anybody with a multi-snipe that's MSV level two, just great defensively. I love these um what should we call it trench coats so i already have my sniper painted i'm going to paint this hmg as well i really hope they do a svarlheimer um sectorial at some point because i really really want to do lots of nieces because i think they're awesome and then i've got roger van zandt with axe now i have the gen con van zandt which uh, a super nice um uh buddy of mine got for me at gen con which i thought was amazing um and i'm gonna paint him but like just for pure like rain of fire purposes this guy is amazing because he's got the axe and he just screams you know i lead you follow which is you know matthew mcconaughey in that movie basically that's the joke if you guys didn't get it go watch that movie it's not bad it's not great but it's not bad um and then last but not least from that blisters the coastal assault planer so an engineer that isn't basically stuck in the rear with the gear, which the Kumatel usually is. This guy's actually gonna have like some use in game. K1 Combi, uh, he's just bad news bears. And I'm really excited about the model. So when I start my Toha Army, and I think that 2016 is gonna be the year of the aliens. Uh, I think I'm gonna start doing my Toha and my Combine and switch focus off of Ariadna and Pano um, and their various sectorials because I just want to do something new. I spent most of 2015 kind of getting my head wrapped around and becoming really proficient with those two armies. And I'd like to do that every year with different armies. I think that's useful. So this guy's going in the hopper for that. And then last but not least, one of the armies in 2015, I don't think I played enough with that will be probably the 2016 starter army. This is the new Guja and he's so freaking cool. He's got little robo arms. Um, and if you look at him compared to the old one, cause I have the old one and I didn't paint it as soon as I heard that there was going to be a new one. This guy's enormous. He's so much bigger. Um, he's meat and potatoes though, man. As, as, far as, like, as far as tags go, he's even more basic than the Squall. The Squall is pretty basic, but the Guja, he's really just got ECM. That's all he's got. He's got one thing that I do like over the Squall though, which is a heavy flamethrower. Um, and that means that he's both proficient up close and far away, which is a big deal for a tag. It's one of the things that makes Jotam so amazing, is Jotam has a multi-HMG, a DEP, and a heavy flamer. Guja's 88 points, so he's way cheaper, and he's got the heavy flamethrower and a decent close combat weapon, which makes him dangerous up close. But just look at how beefy his legs are. Like the old Guja legs, like he's still got the chunky profile. He's not exactly the same as the old Guja, which was clearly like riffing on a landmate from Appleseed but he's just bad news like i love him i may convert him i've seen some guys putting the hmg in the hand um, and i kind of like that idea so i may try and do that but i'm super stoked to actually put this guy together and paint him um he's got a base already from the awesome base set from um top down train and it's just begging for this guy to get painted see so he's going in the queue as well uh that's probably my christmas present myself is paint some more infinity stuff just for funsies uh so there it is i got future projects and i've got of course my knocked off and finished pile hope you guys enjoyed that look all right, so you have it, my on the paint table for this week. You got to see the huge sort of glut of stuff that I finished in the last little while. I'm going to look at some of what's coming in the future. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, we will be back hopefully regularly with one every week again. <laughs> the insanity of like taking on a whole bunch of really big projects and also going away for a week um, is basically settled down. We're moving to the holidays. I should have the stuff quiet down and be able to kind of like determine what I want to do in 2016. Um, and this is kind of a part of it. You heard me talk a little bit about the um, the focus I'm gonna have on Toha and probably Combine do the Year of the Aliens and then finishing off my Yu Ching. Um, so that's kind of one of my resolutions I'm blowing through in my head right now. Um, if you're interested in end of the year paying resolutions, you can join the, um, what is it, Grill Miniature Games 2015 Hobby Resolutions group on Facebook. Um, it's getting pretty big. It's got like a hundred and I don't know, dozen people in it. And some of them on some really big years. My buddy Benoit in Montreal has painted like over 180 models. Um, there's some guys who've gotten like really high up there as far as model count painted um, and have really committed to trying to keep their stuff down. My buddy stands at over 200. Yeah, like crazy amounts of miniatures. So. Um, it's been really, really successful, and I, I hope other people will join it this year. Uh, we're all going to be doing our counts, figuring out what we did 
So the basic premise is how much did you buy during the year? How much did you paint that you already owned? And then how much did you paint overall? And it's kind of like a net thing and that's part of the resolution. So we'll figure out how 2015 went. We'll talk about doing stuff in 2016, figure out some resolutions. Um, and hopefully uh, that's gonna be successful for people. So I'm just putting the shit out there now because uh, hopefully people will get thinking about it and do the math and try and work out what they did and what they didn't do. I kept track all year, which I'm pretty proud of. I'm actually at about a model a day so far. Um, if I can get over a model a day, I'll have to get some paint done this month, but I'm pretty sure I can do it. I'm pretty sure I'm actually gonna get up over a model a day for um, for miniatures this year. And then I gotta beat that next year, which is gonna be bananas. Um, so thanks again for watching. We'll see you for us next week. Until then, I'm Ash. Happy birthday.